If you own a Canon camera and you're interested in filmmaking, then today's video is gonna be just for you. Let's roll that intro. Hi guys, my name's Ben from Ben's Guide. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Canon camera for filmmaking. Now the video today is gonna to be five or probably 10 minutes at the very most. So it's gonna be a short video and it's gonna show you how to set up your camera settings so that you can shoot video just like this. Now it doesn't actually matter what Canon camera you've actually got, if it's an old one or if it's a new one, the actual settings in today's video that I'm gonna show you will work with most Canon digital cameras. Okay guys, without any more waiting, let's just jump right in and get into the camera settings. One of the most important settings to discuss is frame rate. This is really important because it's gonna give you a different look depending on the frame rate you use to the look of your video. Starting with 24 frames per second, this is particularly good for talking to camera in how-to videos and vlogs. It gives you that nice natural look. It's also good for cinematography, creating that film look. But when you took a look at the video just about 30 seconds ago that I'd filmed, you could see that actually a lot of that was more slow motion. It was slowed down and to get that effect, I use 60 frames per second. This is because you can then transfer that over into your video editing software like Premiere Pro, slow it down, and you get that really nice cinematic film look, which just about everyone loves. Now it's important to know that when you're using frame rate and you're choosing your settings, you need to make sure that your shutter speed is double what you're using with your frame rate. So if I'm shooting at 60 frames per second, I want one over 125 for my shutter speed, which is double 60. Of course, if I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, I wanna bring down that shutter speed to one over 50, which is gonna be double 24. Next up is autofocus. This is super important because you want everything in your scene or specific areas to be in focus and not blurred. Now, autofocus is important to start with, and most Canon cameras have at least three areas which are almost very much the same. The first is the wide zone autofocus that you can see here, which is this box, and you can actually focus in on wider areas. Now, on the EOS RP, which I'm showing you, you've actually got a couple of these options which are a bit bigger. So you can use the first one or this one, and all you need to do is click and drag it on your Alm CD screen at the back, and then just move it onto the area that you actually want to focus on. And then simply, it will focus on this area nice and quickly. Now the next thing to take a look at in the focus selections is the one-point autofocus. This is a small area, which is very good for drawing in the viewer's eye to a certain specific area in your scene. You can also use this to actually create certain effects which you see in films. This effect here is called the focus pull. Now this is something that you see all the time in films, you see in documentaries. It's so simple to do, just click on the one area and then click on the other on your screen and you get this focus pull where you draw the viewer's eye to the next part in your scene. Last but not least is face tracking. I have eye autofocus as well on this camera here, but face tracking is brilliant for tracking anyone's face, 
in the film. Now, if you're doing talking to head or you're doing vlogs, you must use this option. It's going to be brilliant for keeping you in focus while you're talking to the camera. Have you ever wondered how some filmmakers get such nice, clean looking footage? Well, one of the tricks to this is to get your ISO as low as possible. Now, when you're using your ISO, you want to have it around about 100 to 200. This is going to give you nice looking, clean video. Sometimes, though, I appreciate that you're going to be filming in a darker area and you're not going to have external lights to light up the area for you. In this case, you want to push your ISO up to somewhere around about no higher than 1600 to 3200. This is going to enable you to light your scene in darker scenes, but at the same time, it's not going to introduce too much noise. If you can though, you want to keep your ISO around about 100 to 200, and this is going to give you the nicest, cleanest looking footage. Alternatively, you can actually throw caution to the wind and you can put your ISO on auto. This means your camera will decide the ISO that you need for the light in your scene. Okay, so before we move on to the next camera settings, you need to take a look at these accessories which will help your filmmaking. First up is the ND filter. It's basically sunglasses for your camera and these are a godsend if you're shooting outdoors in sunny weather. It's gonna dull down your footage and it's gonna keep it nice and at the right exposure. Next up, you're looking at keeping your footage smooth. This is a big thing for keeping the footage looking cinematic. Make sure you get yourself a lens with stabilization built in and this will take care of the job for you. Finally, you wanna make sure you use external audio to add that extra dimension to your filmmaking. You can get a lapel mic like this, or you can also get a shotgun mic which fits on top of the camera and then connects in at the side. Both of these options are very good and both of them will work just as good in their specific areas. I will leave a link or links to these items in the description of the video. If you wanna get a professional look to your video footage, you've got to use the right picture profile. Now, unless you've got a higher end camera, you won't have Canon C-Log. So you'll need to use something like the neutral setting. This is going to basically give you the flattest footage that you can get. Now, why is that good? Well, using flat footage with less of the contrast, the color and the sharpness in, is gonna give you something to work with and color grade in your video editing software. You can simply click on the levels here, like the strength, the sharpening, and the contrast, lower them down, and then when you take this into your video editing software, you can then add on some color grading or color to make it look really professional and something like you'd see at the cinema. I hope you enjoyed the video today, guys, and I hope that you found it helpful. You can use these settings and then you can make the most of filmmaking now with your Canon camera. Now remember this is part one and part two is coming next week. So if you wanna be notified about that, just hit subscribe and then make sure you hit that notification bell and then you'll get a notification letting you know when the video is live next week. Remember, everything that you've seen in the video today is available in the description below so you can click there and get anything that you may want for your Canon camera. Whatever you do for the rest of the day, guys, make sure it's a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.